But all across the levels, ancient woodland and pasture has long been a stronghold for some more familiar faces. About half of the UK's badgers live here in the West Country. And like badgers anywhere, occasionally they run into trouble. Secret World Wildlife Rescue has been helping to rehabilitate orphaned, sick or injured animals for the past 20 years. The charity's founder, Pauline Kidner, is busier than ever. We now deal with just over 5,000 animals every year, so it has grown. Everything has a season, so January, February, March, we're going to have fox cubs, we're going to have badger cubs. As soon as the first blackbird comes in, it's, oh my God, we've started the bird season. And then as soon as we get to June, the first herring gull comes in and you know that's going to start. Round about now, it's baby bats um, and it's fawns and those sort of things. So the season's all the way through. That's what makes it so interesting, is that it's so varied. Pauline's dedication to Somerset's ailing animals sometimes stretches to giving her patients a temporary home in her own house. Meet Bumblebee and Nat. Bumblebee, which is the bigger badger, she was found in Glastonbury um, and she was wandering around the high street um, just up and down the road when a member of public found her. And Nat was found um, at a country park um, just out away from the set. Both cubs are around 12 weeks old. It's not clear how they became separated from their families. But for now, this is the best place for them. They're in the expert care of Josie Knott. Nat um, is a little bit smaller than what he should be at his age. So we have them up in Pauline's cubby hole um, so that she can keep a close eye on him um, and we can monitor his, his growth. We've never had one in that's been as small as Nat um, at the age that he is. He is pretty adorable, but we have to remember that our aim is to get them back into the wild. Wild badger cubs live most of the day underground in a warm set, so Pauline's cosy kitchen is a pretty good option for these vulnerable youngsters. For Bumblebee and Nat, this is just the first step on the long road to re-release. When a badger first comes in, um, we obviously treat it for any wounds that it has and treat it for anything that it needs. We will then have them TB tested when they're around eight weeks old. And if that comes back as a negative, they would then be mixed with other badgers that we have on site here to make a family group. And each badger has a different individual smell. And then when they've scented each other, that creates an individual family smell. Even after a month away from their natural home, there are promising signs that Bumblebee and Nat are still all badger. And even at this age, whilst they're out and about playing, they're climbing, they're digging, they'll grab items and pull them behind them, uh, which is how they would collect bedding um, in the wild and drag it back to their sets. You see a lot of natural behaviour, which is really encouraging. Playing is vital for the cubs to develop the life skills they'll need for survival. And of course, it's what makes them irresistible to camera crews. <laughs> Two months later, the young badger cubs have been moved to an outside pen to mingle with other badgers away from human company. But even more advanced in this delicate and painstaking process of rehabilitation and almost ready for re-release into the wild is one very special otter. His name is Drift. Across Somerset, otter numbers are steadily rising, helped by the warm weather here and an abundance of waterways for them to fish in. But if a young otter is separated from its mother, it won't survive long. Drift was found in Somerset and he was found at the back of a hotel. He was just sat there squeaking away, um, very sad and lonely. Luckily, young Drift was brought here to Secret World for some expert care. He was a cub of just five weeks old. We've had Drift for over a year. Um, his rehab's been really good. In her role as surrogate mum to the young otter, Josie's fed him weaned him onto solid food, given him swimming lessons, and even taught him how to hunt. 
But there comes a time in all parents' lives for their young ones to fly the coop. It's really important for Drift just to get back home to, to the wild. He's a wild animal, that's where he needs to be. He's a male otter. His biggest challenge is being a male. <laughs> he's going to have to fight for his life, really. He's going to have to fight for his territory, fight for his women. Um, and eventually, hopefully, he'll find his feet and he'll get into the swing of it. Release coordinator Tristan Cooper has spent weeks researching the ideal spot for Drift to start his new life. The plan is for a soft release, a staged return to the wild in gentle steps. And the team will keep a close eye on his progress. For the first couple of weeks, this is his little world. So we've got screening and then we've got electric fencing. And it's basically a case of keeping him within this area for now. It's not such a shock to the system. He can get used to the new sounds and smells. It would be ideal to get a bit of the river in, but that's logistically really hard to do with an electric fence. Uh, but it's really important that he's got water because they have to keep their coat wet. And there's sort of a pile of brash and some tunnels and some natural scrub and cover. So we're basically ready to go. We've done all we can for him. We've given him a really good start. And with Tristan's help to find such a great place to release him. Yeah, I feel really good. After some initial uncertainty, Drift soon starts to settle into his new quarters. But this is just the first step. For now, he's still safely enclosed. In a few weeks, the fence will come down and Drift will be a wild otter once again. Just a few miles from Glastonbury, at a secret location, Tristan is preparing for a crucial moment in the life of orphaned otter Drift. Two weeks ago, Drift was moved to his halfway house, an enclosure where he can adjust to life in the wild. But today's the day when that fence is coming down. It's all out of our hands now. It's up to him to go and find his way in the wild. Um, but we know that we've done everything we can to give him sort of the best second chance. I hope he's going to go and make me proud. <laughs> Drift is left alone to pick his moment to venture into the wild. The remote trail cams left around the site will be Tristan's only indication of how Drift is getting on. It's the culmination of months of work and preparation. He's still around in the area, which is uh, quite a nice surprise. We didn't expect him to hang around this long, uh, but I think that's it's a good thing that he's still about. He's eating well, he's uh, fending for himself, he's swimming in the river, which he's obviously never done before, which is really exciting. Tristan still leaves food for Drift to support him as he learns to hunt for himself. And where there's free fish, there's likely to be competition. We've got a fox that's been hanging around quite a bit who we think has been sharing the food that's been being put out for Drift. He's not been going back for support food every day, which suggests that he is finding natural food and he is learning to fend for himself. It's fantastic to see Drift's instinct and adaptive intelligence kicking in after a year of captivity. And the cameras have revealed something that was beyond Tristram's wildest hopes. We've got two otters, which I think is potentially drift and a lady otter. Uh, so it's really exciting to see and quite a surprise. The fact that he's hung around for this long and has now been obviously interacting with another otter is really exciting because male otters are fiercely territorial and there was, there was a chance that he was gonna go out into the world and get his butt kicked, <laughs> basically. 
who knows there could be little baby drifts out there at some point in the foreseeable future who knows